Hey everyone, I'm Sil Arena. I'm the author of the Speedlighters Handbook and the recently published book, Lighting for Digital Photography. I'm here at B&H Photo today to share with you three different ideas for modifying your speed light, ways to create different types of light out of small flash. So I want you to think about modifying a speed light from three different perspectives. Number one, make the speed light appear bigger than it really is, which is the gateway to creating soft light, soft shadows. Number two, limit where the speed light is going to fly so that you can create, if you want, just a spotlight effect or you can light your subject separately from the background. And number three, change the color of the speed light so that you can either blend it in with a different type of light, like an incandescent light bulb, or so that you can make it stand out for a theatrical or dramatic effect. Now, if you're new to the world of speed lights, you're probably looking at your camera and your flash and thinking this is the normal place to put it. And in fact, it's a great place to start. But one of the challenges when you put your speed light in the hot shoe and point it straight forward is that it's going to light both sides of your subject equally. There's no shadows, and it's really the shadows in the image that create the sense of depth and texture. So one of the things you can do quite quickly is move that speed light over to the side and fire the flash off of a nearby wall. Now that's going to do two things. It's going to increase the apparent size of light source. It's going to make the light come at your subject from several different directions simultaneously, which creates soft light. And it's going to create some directionality. It's going to create soft shadows that cross in the front of your subject so the camera can see them. And this is the kind of light you're going to get when that speed light is flying straight forward towards your subject. It's going to light both sides of their face equally. And by doing that, it's filling and actually killing the shadows. You don't really see any shadows on Gabe's face. You don't see any shadows in the texture of his shirt. But what you do see is that really hard shadow on the wall behind him. Now, by moving the speed light to the left, literally turning the head of the speed light so that it bounces off the wall, I'm changing the flash significantly. The wall bounce makes it appear really, really soft. So those distracting shadows go away. His face has more depth, more character. And yet, because the light is now coming in to the shot from an angle, Gabe's shadow falls off more naturally to the right side of the frame. Look at that lower right-hand corner. That's his shadow now. It's not that hard thing that was right behind his head. It's that mysterious dark edge down in the corner. It's there, it adds depth to the shot, but it's not distracting. All that just by turning the head of the speed light about 45 degrees to the left. Now in terms of creating soft light, which is what most people who are starting with small flash want to know, the reason that your speed light creates hard light is because it's small. And when you have a small light source, it sends all the light straight at the subject. If you can make that light source appear big, then it's going to send the light at the subject from a wide set of angles. Think about it this way. On a sunny day, you've got a hard shadow as you're walking down the sidewalk. On a cloudy day, you've got a soft shadow because the clouds come in and they intercept the sunlight and they send it at your subject, at you, from a wide set of angles, so the shadows are being filled. So the way to create soft light with a speed light is to make it appear bigger. Now one of my favorite modifiers to do this is the Impact Quick Box. A soft box, which is what the Quick Box is, effectively has a translucent panel, a cloud bank on the front, and four opaque sides. Speed light mounts in the back, and yet when you fire your flash, the translucent panel becomes the light source. It's really easy to create soft light with the Impact Quick Box because you can just basically move it into the side of your subject a little bit between the camera and the person you're photographing so it lights both sides of their face. And you go from having a small light source which creates hard light to having a large light source which creates soft light. So as you can see here, the light is completely different. I put the speed light in through an impact quick box, the 24 inch quick box that's off to the left side of the camera. So the quick box is creating beautiful soft light. Also notice because it's off to the left side of the lens that Gabe now has a shadow on his cheek and his chin. His face appears to have more depth and more texture and more character. 
Now another way to create soft light is to use a globe diffuser. Think of it this way. Think of a plastic ostrich egg that you strap on to the head of your speed light. And the cool thing about a globe diffuser is that it throws light everywhere. It's almost the opposite of a softbox, which has a light coming out of one side. A globe diffuser is very much like a bare bulb. In fact, photographers refer to the light that it creates as being the bare bulb effect. So it creates a tight pool of light at the top that falls off very dramatically towards the edges of the photograph and down the front of the subject. So this is with the globe diffuser hanging down just in front of Gabe's face, literally right outside the edge of the frame. And I love the light of the globe diffuser. It's so, so unique. One of the things I want you to notice is how it creates this really soft, subtle vignette behind Gabe on the background. That's because some of the light is flying out of the sides of the globe diffuser away from Gabe and hitting the background. But it's a really natural looking vignette and yet it's soft light and it's allowing you to concentrate on the character of his face. So we've talked about how to soften the light with soft boxes or with a globe diffuser. Now I want to go in the other direction. Rather than create a very large light source, I actually want to limit and control where my speed light is going to fire. One of the controls we have on the speed light itself is a zoom button. Most of our speed lights come from the factory set for auto zoom, which means that they're going to move the flash tube as we adjust the lens, particularly if we've got a zoom lens. So if we've got a wide angle lens, the light flies out like this. If we've got a telephoto lens, the light's going to be a little bit tighter. You can use that zoom button in manual mode to control where the light flies. Now that's going to be helpful in the field if you don't have any gear, but I'm a big fan of taking grids with my speed lights because a grid is basically going to enable me to turn my rectilinear flash, this little box of light, into a spotlight effect. Now grids are basically like honeycombs and the size of the honeycomb determines the spread of the light. And one of the things I like is to use this little mini beauty reflector as a grid holder because the grids can snap in and out and if I find on a shoot while I'm engaging my subject that I've got too much light, I can change the grid really quickly. And again, the tighter the honeycomb, the tighter the spotlight effect. Now, take a look at this. This is shot with the wide grid. I'm able to darken the background on the left side of the frame, which directs your eye to look more closely at Gabe, and yet the light on Gabe's face still has that hard edge shadow right around his nose, but I'm really controlling the background vignette, and I'm still creating that cool shadow on the right side of the frame. So as you can see here with the medium grid, there's more of a vignette. We're basically continuing to tighten up the pattern of light and creating darker edges around the frame, which forces the viewer to concentrate more intently on the subject. And now when I put in the narrow grid, the smallest of the three that come with this Strobro's kit, I'm creating a really small spot of light on Gabe's face and on his shoulder. And take a look on the right hand side, his shadow, which formerly was really distinct, now merges with the blackness of the background. It's only really a suggestion of a shadow, which depending on your mood can be a very dramatic effect. Largely that's what you get when you use grids, really dramatic light. Now if you want an even tighter pattern than that, you can use a snoot. And a snoot is basically a metal cone that you put on the front of your speed light, and then if you put a tiny grid on the end of that snoot, you can literally create a tiny spotlight. If you're a product photographer and you want to light just a wristwatch, for instance, you can use a snoot. If you're a portrait photographer and you want to create a really dramatic, almost a theatrical effect, you can use a snoot as well. So when you have a snoot on your speed light, the thing to remember is that the cone of light gets really, really tight. It's so tight that you have to aim the snoot really carefully. And here in this shot, I totally <laughs> missed. I've lit the top of Gabe's face, but as you can see, I don't have enough light on his chin or any light on his shoulders. So this is close, but not quite there. All right, so you can see here, after re-aiming the snoot, I'm lighting Gabe's face, but not much more. I've got the whole face, a little bit of his hat, a little bit of his shoulder, but really, the snoot's pattern is so, so tight. That's how tight the pattern is coming out of the snoot. But what a dramatic light it creates, that true spotlight effect from your speed light. All right, so we've talked about how to make light softer by increasing the apparent size of the light source. We've talked about how to limit where your flash flies with snoots and with grids. 
Now I want to talk about how to change the color of your flash because one of the things I understand is that the color of light coming from your speed light, the color of virtually all types of electronic flash, is basically the look of sunlight at noon, which is different than the look of a rising sun, different than the look of a setting sun. We also have to think about the fact that if we shoot indoors under artificial light, that artificial light has a particular color cast. So I'm lighting Gabe here with an incandescent spotlight, a theatrical spotlight. And as you can see, it creates a very warm color of light on Gabe. But because it's a directional light, I've got dark shadows on the opposite side. Now I want to use my fill flash, my speed light on a light stand, to add light into the shadows. And yet when I fire that speed light direct, you can see that the fill flash doesn't really blend with the incandescent light. I've got warm on one side and actually kind of cold flash coming in from the other. So the way that I fix this is by using a gel. And a gel is essentially a colored piece of plastic, in this case a CTO gel, a color temperature orange gel which has a deep amber cast. And I strap that onto the front of my speed light and now look what happens to the fill flash. It blends in very naturally so that I've got two different types of light source. I've got a hot light and electronic flash working together and the gel has brought them seamlessly together in terms of key light and fill light. Now, you can go the opposite direction of color correction. You can go into dramatic effects. If you want, you can get gels in reds and yellows and blues and greens, virtually an entire rainbow of colors. So you can spotlight your background in a color or you can use different colors in your subject. Literally, your imagination is the limit to creating dramatic light with gels. So think about it, color correction, trying to blend your flash, or dramatic effects, trying to get your flash to stand out in almost a circus-like effect. So we've talked about making the light softer, we've talked about limiting where it flies, we've talked about changing the color. There is so much to learn about flash that I want you to check out my other videos on the B&H channel, all right? I've done four or five different speed light videos, and I want you to check out the Strobros kit. It's got the grids, globe diffuser, snoot, color correction gels, a speed strap. So look for the Silarina Strobros kit on the B&H site. And lastly, check out my books, of course, Speedlighter's Handbook and Lighting for Digital Photography. They'll give you lots of tips and a lot of in-depth info on how to create great light in your photographs. I'm Sil Arena. Thanks for watching. Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, B&H has the answers to your questions. Experience a world of technology at our New York City Superstore. Connect with us online or give us a call. Our staff of experts is happy to help.